A shocking move from Ukraine. The Russian army was helpless against Ukraine. Russian soldiers raised the white flag. This advantage gained by Ukrainian soldiers has completely cornered Russia. The Ukrainian army has now reached a very different point. This raid on the headquarters in Zaporizhia has seriously consolidated Ukraine's regional dominance in the last days of the Russian-Ukrainian war. The Ukrainian army has gained one advantage after another. The Russian army has been stunned by its recent defeats. If the situation continues like this, it will not be long before the Ukrainian army will be able to end the war. With the desperation of the Russian army, Putin is at a loss. What to do? Many of the problems in Zaporizhia have resurfaced. The situation of Russian soldiers has been echoed around the world. Ukraine has recently started to take different steps using its intelligence network. Since the Russian army was not fully aware of this intelligence, it took action against Ukraine. But since the Russian army is reluctant to do so, it has become impossible to achieve the slightest victory against Ukrainian soldiers because of the internal confusion within the Russian army. Things to get completely different term, but at the same time, the critical information gathered by Ukrainian intelligence would provide the Russian army with the strongest blow it had ever been dealt. Ukrainian intelligence first sent directors to locate one of Russia's critical military bases in this region. The director scanned this area using sonar. Following these scans against the Russian army, the Ukrainian army mapped the entire region. A large number of unmanned aerial vehicles and Ukrainian special forces were mobilized in order to carry out an operation against the military base in this region, which is very important for the control of Zaporizhia. At the same time, Ukrainian troops began preparations for a very big step knowing how critical this attack order was. They captured a number of tanks, but these steps have now completely cornered the Russian army. Ukrainian troops started to move towards Zaporizhia. The Russian army is cornered because Ukraine dominates every inch of the geography, while a large number of Ukrainian soldiers coming to this region approach the Russian military headquarters. Russian observation units started to make different moves when they detected the Ukrainian army. This time, the Russian army was prepared for such a raid on the headquarters. Since the Ukrainian army was aware of this preparation, it made that move to corner the Russian army and this no doubt such a blow to the Russian army. Ukrainian soldiers first sent by over the Russian military headquarters. The Bayraktars, which were removed from the airport, started bombing the headquarters one after the other. The Ukrainian army also launched a ground offensive, but the Ukrainian army, which was divided in on the way, deployed some of its troops behind the corridors. The Russian army was not yet aware of this move. Ukrainian soldiers started to warn the Russian military headquarters. The Russians then showed that they would not surrender by opening fire. The Ukrainian army then moved the HIMARS closer to this area to bring it into range with the tanks already near the headquarters. The Ukrainian soldiers' pace quickened when the tanks started firing one after another. The outer walls of the Russian headquarters were heavily damaged. The Ukrainian Abrams were particularly effective at this point, thanks to the uranium-fortified barrels of these. Abrams, the Ukrainian army fired shots that leveled the headquarters. Then it started to send infantry units against the Russian army. With the Ukrainian army sending these infantry units, two Russian soldiers were helpless. They started to hide inside the headquarters because they could not withstand the power of the tanks, even though they exchanged shots. Then Ukraine's last critical move changed everything. Ukraine called for surrender after completely blockading the headquarters. At the same time, a large number of troops moved to surrender to the Ukrainian army. But when the last part of the Russian troops continued to open fire, the Ukrainian army pulled the Bayraktars back to this area and started shelling. At the same time, the Russian army decided to surrender by hoisting the white flag made from the sheets they had at their headquarters. After this, the confessions of the captured Russian soldiers literally drove Putin crazy. Many captured Russians stated that they were faced with great difficulties in Zaporizhia. After that, shocking allegations about the Russian army began to be put forward. 
The captive Russian soldier emphasized that Putin has not been able to deploy troops to this region lately. And the most important reason for this is the logistics problem. The logistics network was completely cut off as the Ukrainian army attacked this region one after another. However, the steps that Ukrainian soldiers would take here were constantly built to the Russian army. Putin constantly blamed the Russian army for its failed strategies and wrong policies. Because of this, the Russian army took its troubles to a different level and did not know what to do. Things changed completely when the Russian soldiers decided to revolt against their last commander. Putin has had two different targets to fight for some time now since the Ukrainian army was aware of these two different targets, they took care of their steps differently. While Putin's first enemy was the Ukrainian army, another enemy was recorded as the group opposing Putin within the Russian army. By constantly clashing with these opposition groups, Putin paved the way for the Russian army to reach a troubled point. The Ukrainian army then realized that it had put Russia in a very serious crisis. If the situation continues in this way, there will be massive popular mobilizations and a very serious coup attempt in Russia. With the continuity of this situation, Putin's fall from power is expected to take place in a short time. But a critical comment made by war analysts has changed everything. According to war analysts, Putin's time in power is coming to an end. However, Putin no longer has the slightest chance of escape if he continues as he is. Putin will be put on a very serious trial when his rule ends in the near future. Both his crimes and his numerous war crimes will change everything. But many bureaucrats who are afraid of Putin's trial have also started to show themselves. All those who were held responsible for the Russian army's troubles in this region were cleared only because they were close to Putin. Although everyone realized that this closeness to Putin would cause problems after a while, Russia's policies, which have become more and more troubling, are the basis of a huge tension, and with the violation of many international laws, the Russian army is now at a point where it is at a loss as to what to do. If this continues, the Ukrainian army will win the war. And after winning this war, Ukraine's regional power will increase while Russia will have no influence at all. The Russians are thought to be aware of this. If Putin loses the war, all of Russia's moves in this region will come to an end. Russia will no longer have the slightest advantage, and many of the satellite countries around it will start to speak out against Putin. And if Putin's troubles get worse, Russia will not have the power to make the slightest breakthrough. This means that many balances will change in Eastern Europe and the Russian army will be weakened by these changes. There is a lot of news from the Donetsk region. Ukrainian, British and American intelligence all agree that the Russians plan to launch their a great offensive operation by the end of this week. By that time, the Russians expected to create chaos on the front line by collapsing the Ukrainian defense in Barmut or somewhere else. However, the Russians got stuck in front of several key Ukrainian positions that threatened to undermine and completely ruin all Russian plans in an attempt to meet the deadline. The Russian command ordered to assault absolutely all Ukrainian positions in Donbass non-stop. But here is how translated to the fronts when it comes to the Avdivka region. Last time I told you that the Russians surprised the Ukrainians by launching an attack across the frozen water which allowed them to assault the weakest point in the Ukrainian defense line and establish control over the eastern part of the settlement. For the next three weeks, the Russians have been trying to expand to the north and west, but as usual, Incremental advancements in the object direction are extremely slow. Russian sources reported that their capabilities in this region were being limited by intense Ukrainian artillery fire. On top of that, if you look at the topographic map, we can see that there are two hills in front of this settlement. This is exactly where the Russians tried to move in as fast as possible as part of the Avdi of Quinn circlement operation. However, Due to the hills, extensive trenches, closeness to the main supply hub of the Avdiivka group, the fact that the Ukrainians allocated more troops to stabilize the front line and no element of surprise. 
the Russians did not manage to breach the next line of defense and got stuck. Today, the Russians developed a new plan and launched intense assaults along the whole of Dufka front. They attacked Ukrainian positions in Pervomaisk, Kamyanka and in front of Volhynia, Opeton, and even Novdivka itself. Judging by the direction of attacks, it is clear that they did not plan to breach Ukrainian defense somewhere else. The main goal of the Russians was to disperse Ukrainian troops that they concentrated near Sivany. This is a very costly tactic because attacking Novdivka in front is simply a suicide mission. But the Russians can afford it, as they have been relocating a lot of mobilized soldiers to Donbass. One of the things that the Ukrainians can and are doing to not allow the Russians to use all their resources is creating logistical problems by conducting constant HIMARS strikes, by continuously destroying ammunition depots that are close to the front line. They are creating short-term deficits and forcing the assault units to ration and save ammunition until the next supplies arrive from the deep reserves. Today, the Ukrainians conducted yet another strike and destroyed an ammunition depot in Donetsk at the former cinema building. Since the last coverage of this region, the Ukrainians have consistently targeted the main logistical hubs and bases in the region Ilovysk, Kartsysk, Makievka, and of course, Donetsk. When it comes to the Volodar area, the Ukrainians regained the initiative. Last time I told you that the Ukrainians had successfully pushed the Russians out of the eastern hamlet and that the Russians also unsuccessfully assaulted the coal mines. I also told you that the Ukrainians in Volodar assumed more of a passive position being in pure defense while most attacks were conducted from the coal mines area. Right now the situation has improved even more and the Ukrainians in Volodar have become more active. The Russians are not giving up and they continue to throw their forces to attack the eastern hamlet. These attacks must be launched across the field, which is why the Russians started to use the following tactic. They sent a lot of small infantry groups to get as far along the tree belts as possible, and then they sent several infantry fighting vehicles under cover of smoke to establish their positions even closer. So far, it has been a one-way trip. The Ukrainians just overwhelm them with artillery fire and then in one thrust, eliminate the rest. Russian sources confirmed that the number of Ukrainian counterattacks has increased. Ukrainian sources report that Russian forces lost up to 30 armored vehicles during the counterattacks and associated strikes. Some sources recently posted footage and imagery confirming Ukrainian strikes and counterattacks. Overall, the Russian command likely ordered to continue to assault Volodar, despite the fact that it looks like they ran out of viable tactics as the Russians relocated tens of thousands of mobilized troops to the front. They can clearly afford high losses. The main goal is to bridge the Ukrainian defense at least somewhere. It is necessary for the Russians to collapse a segment of the front line because it will force the Ukrainians to use up their reserves in an attempt to stabilize the front line. Once the Ukrainians have no available reserves, the Russians want to launch their main offensive operation. But so far Volodar, Avdeyevka, Barmut and Sivers continue to hold. While the Russians are running out of time to launch an offensive before the rainy season, the window closes steadily, which forces the Russians to sacrifice thousands of troops skilled and wounded per day just to set proper conditions for their long-awaited offensive operation. The power of armies is measured by their gains in the air, land, and sea, especially in the wars of two countries bordering each other. Land operations have a great importance in influencing the course of the war. The most effective equipment used in these operations are undoubtedly tanks and armored combat vehicles. This is clearly visible in the Russia-Ukraine war. Although the Russian army attacks the regions bordering Ukraine with tanks and armored vehicles, the Ukrainian army manages to repel almost all of these attacks. A new video released by the Ukrainian Security Service recently shows the blow dealt to the ground forces of the Russian invaders in one night. The Ukrainian army blew up 10 Russian tanks in a successful operation. Before we go into details of the spectacular attack, we have a request for you. As a daily news team, 
We continue to report all the developments in the Russia-Ukraine war, both on the front line and in diplomacy with our understanding of accurate and impartial journalism. You can click the super thanks button to support our teammates and our work. Footage of the attacks in which 10 Russian tanks were blown up was shared on the official social media account of the Ukrainian security service. It appears that the footage was recorded by the camera of an unmanned aerial vehicle. The Ukrainian army carried out a series of attacks on the occupation zones where Russian tanks were concentrated. In this operation, which showed the effectiveness of the air force in the war, the Russian invaders suffered great losses. Sharing the footage of the operation, the Ukrainian security service wrote in its post 9 or 10. 10. Exactly how many Russian tanks destroyed the SBU White Wolf Special Force in one night? Our specialists of the Special Operations Center, a conducted study of enemy equipment on the dynastic direction. One opponent also burned. Thus 11 goals were scored on this own account. For one night, work was a complete victory. In the footage shared by the Security Service of Ukraine, bombs dropped by Ukrainian drones are falling on the tanks of the Russian invaders with pinpoint accuracy. The moment the bomb falls, the tank catch is fire with a violent explosion. Moreover, this attack is not carried out in one area, but in several areas simultaneously. As the Russian tanks are blown up one by one, the Ukrainian army is getting closer to victory. Immediately after the Ukrainian army announced that they had destroyed 10 tanks of the Russian invaders overnight, Ukrainian interior advisor Anton Garaskin Co. announced a new loss for the Russian invaders. Garaskin Co. announced the loss of the invaders with a post on a social media account as follows. Soldiers of the Special Squad Code 9.2 together with 3,027 National Guards Brigade, tracked down and destroyed the pride of Russian defense industry. That 90 probably tank. Glory to Ukrainian defenders. The losses of tanks and armored vehicles of the Russian army are increasing day by day. In the past days, the Ukrainian army targeted the tanks and armored vehicles of the Russian invaders with attacks on the Bahamut line. The 59th Motorized Brigade blew up the Russian tanks and armored combat vehicles trying to advance in Bahamut. Russian tank and armored vehicle platoon cart in an ambush by the 59th Motorized Brigade. The tanks of the Russian invaders were trying to advance in Bahamut by covering their soldiers, but Ukrainian soldiers were aware of both the tanks and the soldiers they concealed. Russian invaders were being monitored instantly. Ukrainian soldiers stationed on the hills overlooking the city were waiting for the right moment to attack. The T-72 tanks of the Russian invaders were now clearly visible on the target of the Javelin missiles. The time was right and the missiles were fired. The missiles hit the tanks and the tanks exploded. Well, the units of the 59th Motorized Brigade were blowing up Russian tanks. Another brigade unit was pursuing the BMP armored vehicles of the Russian invaders. Ukrainian soldiers opened heavy fire on Russian armored vehicles. Russian invaders driving the vehicle lost control. The cornered armored vehicles were neutralized by artillery shelling. Russia continues to suffer huge losses in Bahamut. With these operations, the impact of the Ukrainian Air Force in the war is clearly demonstrated in the Russian-Ukrainian War, along with the ongoing clashes in the occupied territories. A series of new developments are taking place in the airspace of both countries. For this reason, fighter jets, helicopters and missiles are effectively in air operations as tanks and armored vehicles are in ground operations. While the losses suffered by the Russian army on the ground are increasing day by day, the losses suffered in the air are also increasing. With the recent incident in Bahamut, a new one has been added to the losses of the Russian occupiers. Buckland has witnessed hundreds of thousands of clashes in the air and on the ground since Russia began its occupation of Ukraine. So much so that the Ukrainian army announced that hundreds of clashes took place in Bahamut in one day. Russian invaders lost tens of thousands of soldiers and tons of equipment in Bahamut. The development in Bahamut in the past day reveals the loss of the Russian Air Force. The 93rd Separate Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Army heard aircraft sounds while on duty in Bahamut. 
This song belonged to a Russian Su-24 model jet. The soldiers headed towards the area where the sound came from and saw the Russian jet in the skies over Barmut. But the Russian jet did not notice the soldiers. The brigade soldiers quickly began preparations to shoot down the Russian jet. The jet was clearly visible in the skies over Bahamut. The Su-24 jet was flying sorties in the sky over the city. Ukrainian soldiers were ready to attack, but the Russian jet had disappeared. Ukrainian soldiers continued to follow the sky, expecting to see the Russian jet at any moment. And then it happened. The Russian jet was heard again. Everything was ready for the attack. The Ukrainian soldiers watching their prey started firing as the Russian Su-24 fighter jet entered their range. The fighter jet in the sky turned into a ball of flames with the accurate shooting of the Ukrainian soldiers. Yes, contact as the down plane glided towards the ground, the Russian pilot was ejected from the plane. Thanks to the pilot ejection system on board, however, there is no information about the fate of the Russian pilot. The details of the operation carried out by the 93rd Separate Mechanized Brigade of the Ukrainian Army were announced by Andrei Yermak, head of the Presidential Office of Ukraine. After this announcement, Ukrainians felt pride and joy. While there was great sadness on the Russian side because Russia was approaching exhaustion with the loss of soldiers and ammunition, with this loss, the Russian Air Force lost a total of 305 airplanes, 290 helicopters, and 2,159 unmanned aerial vehicles during the war. The Ukrainian army continues to terrorize the Russian invaders with a series of texts in the air and on the ground. Well, Russian leader Vladimir is wondering how to continue the war with these losses. The Russian people are calling on Putin to end the war as soon as possible, but Putin is not likely to give up the war because his personal interests are above everything. Putin is putting his people in the fire for himself. How do you interpret the successful offensive of the Ukrainian army? Will the Russian invaders be able to recover their losses? What will be the next move of the Russian leader, Vladimir Putin, who is getting exhausted every day? What are your thoughts on the course of the war? We are curious about your views. Follow us for more updates.